Michael from One Sky. Today I'm going to look at a new moon in the constellation of Virgo on September 28, 2019. The last new moon, 30 days before, uh, right around the end of August, was all in Leo. So it was a really focused energy of creativity really focused energy of leadership, of command, of um, kind of an opportunity to take the seat of royalty in your own life, maybe even in your world. This new moon, all the planets in the same way are in Virgo. So we're going to look at that and some of the relationships that they make as a template for the next 30 days to kind of look at uh, what are the energies that are supported? What are the which way is the wind blowing, so to speak? So I make these videos hoping to give people the basic template of lunar movement. And down here we can see that Mars, the moon and sun making a new moon, and Mercury and Venus, which are conjunct, it's not uh, it's not a terribly close conjunction, and then Mars and the new Moon are conjunct. So there are two conjunctions here technically, but a conjunction is a neutral neutral aspect. It doesn't necessarily per se bring out the best qualities or the it's not necessarily going to bring out the obstacles inherent in in two energies it's it, it could be it could be one or the other it depends a lot on how they're aspected where they're placed um, which has a lot to do in this case with the stars of virgo so the stars of virgo are really all about practical implementation where Leo last month was about leadership, creativity, bringing into being and uh, taking that seat of royalty, taking that seat at the center of your own life, your own mandala. Um, we called it the cycle of the boss. Leo is about Leo is about vision. Uh, Virgo this month is about practical implementation. Virgo is a constellation whose stars impart a practical, pragmatic, rational, logical, left-brained approach to um, problem solving, to improving things, to, uh, to uh, any kind of organized or scientific venture. Virgo does love to perfect, it loves to refine, it loves to understand. Virgo is always trying to understand. And it's a stars, a set of stars, a constellation that's known for um, imparting a, a sort of modest or a kind of a reserved or a, uh, yeah, reserved or modest air that uh, it's also known to be discriminating, even critical. So Leo is enthusiastic and creative, and it's also opinionated and generous. It's willful, and those are the energies that we saw last lunar cycle. Virgo is analytical, it's industrious, it's high-strung. Um, Virgo is uh, a different ball of wax, and this month we move into a we move into a cycle where the energies are going to be very, 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 very Virgo. Basically anything that arose last month, anything that came into being out of a creative or uh, an adventure and an, an endeavor of uh, maybe novelty, any kind of adventure too. Um, but anything that last cycle was uh, was envisioned or or created, this cycle we can we can work on uh, ref ref refining it, perfecting it, and improving it. 
in a kind of logical analysis way, just looking at these things and just, just starting to put the pieces together a little differently, maybe tweak it out, maybe make it better. So we do, we do have these qualities of Virgo, which are imparted by those stars. And we, we have them backing all five of the personal planets. And there are some interesting aspects, as, as, as usual, that are made the Sun and Moon in conjunction with Mars. All of those are opposing Chiron in Pisces, which means we may see this cycle themes around healing, themes around um, early, early wounds being resolved, things like our own healing expression. Pisces Chiron is a very holistic, very spiritual, very kind of alternative medicine um, feel. So there's going to be there's going to be a theme of you know, Sun, Moon, Mars, our our basic, at the essential center and essence of ourselves. With the Sun and Moon and Mars, our drive, our determination, our competitiveness, our our um, willpower in practical scientific uh, logical Virgo you know opposed to Chiron in intuitive watery Pisces so we may we may see themes around with Mars oppositions there is a sort of like jousting match or competitive edge that can express itself so we may see uh, those themes, we may see some expression of uh, that Virgo Pisces um, healing. With Chiron, you always have the theme of healing. So it's going to be a great time simply to meditate, simply to bring that right brain and left brain into communication. Uh, meditation does this, any kind of um, focusing or centering exercise does this. Um, so that's one way to look at those energies. It might not be a great cycle for Venus. She is facing Saturn and Pluto in square, and they're conjoined to the south node of the moon, which always brings a little bit of just uh, chaos and a uh, little bit of a uh, little bit of of sometimes perversion sometimes uh corruption sometimes just confusion you often have confusion with the lunar nodes um and venus is out of her element in virgo venus in virgo tends to be critical and tends to be corrective tends to be kind of fussy and nitpicky um always always letting people know how they could improve um, with squares to Pluto, Venus can fall in love quickly or become really infatuated. So, you know, just look out for the, the, the way we're relating to people this cycle. It's going to be touched by a little bit of the, uh, that square energy. Um, issues of power and control and fear, limitation follow Saturn. So when we have a Saturn-Venus square, we have, uh, Mm, you know those issues as well as with with both Pluto and Saturn squares you have a tendency to attract dark people so I mean, Venus is making sextile up to Jupiter in a fucus so this could be lending itself to feeling a little more open a little more friendly a little more permissive but uh yeah, there are a couple of things that are keeping Venus from her her highest expression there, and they're going to be... We have Mercury also making a, uh, a square, I think up to Pluto. I think Mercury is square Pluto, and Mercury is not in square aspect to Saturn, but... Um, yeah, Mercury on Spica, the fixed star Spica in uh, this Alpha Virgo, is going to be really, really accentuated. It's going to be maybe touched by anxiety about change or death. 
but it's still a great time for deep exploration of the subjects you really, really, uh, really love. This is going to be with Mercury on Spica square to Pluto. You have an energy of being able to penetrate the mystery of things. You have an energy that lends itself to deep dives and depth exploration of the subject. Any any subject, but especially scientific ones. Um, but this is a very broad. This is a very broad and open uh, influence. As long as it's a subject that you there's a study of engaging in that study, it's a great time to really go deep, deeper and to kind of crack some of the mysterious uh, aspects crack crack some of the hidden see what's see what's under the surface and how that works that energy is most supportive at this time it's a time when we can deepen we can deepen our knowledge we can deepen our understanding and we can even turn it into wisdom all right everybody I'm going to keep it a little shorter this week, just focusing mostly on the, the inner planets. And, um, you know, thank you for watching my videos. I'm doing my best to keep up with, uh, with the pace. I watch myself on double speed sometimes. I just talk so carefully. And as I'm getting my flow, I really appreciate all your support. And uh, everybody who comments and likes these videos, it really does... Uh, it really does uh, warm my heart. Thank you. So, till next time, my friends. Thanks again.